Welcome back. This is part 11 of Space Rocks, the Godot engine game tutorial where we're making an asteroid style game. Last time we started making an enemy spaceship and this time we're going to add it to the main scene and we're going to make it shoot at the player. All right, let's get started. Now that we have our enemies set up with their paths, we're going to make them spawn in the main scene. So over here I've added an enemy timer to the main scene and in the code we are just loading the reference to that enemy timer. So what we want to do is we want to do a couple of things. Oh, we also need to re we also need to preload the actual enemy scene so that we have a way to spawn it or instance it. So we'll grab enemy.tscn path and paste that in there. So what we're going to do is every time this enemy timer ticks down, we're going to instance one of these enemies. But we're going to want to be able to vary the spawn rate. As the player gets to higher levels, more enemies spawning, that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is when we start a new level, okay, we're going to take the enemy timer and we're going to stop it. So it might have been running from the, the last level, might have you know, only had a couple of seconds left. And I don't want the enemy to spawn based on the timing from the previous level. So we're going to stop it, and then we're going to uh, set the time that we want to wait. So we do set wait time. And this will set how long we want it to wait. Well, I'm going to do, for right now, I'm just going to do a rand range between 20 and 40 seconds. After we get this working, we'll come back in here and we'll make these variables so that we can set them per level. And then we start it. So that way we can make sure that we are working and then we'll respawn it again later. Or we'll change how it respawns later. So then we're just going to take that enemy timer and we're going to connect the timeout signal. And this is going to create one or instance one of these enemies. So we instance it. We're going to add it as a child and we're going to uh, set the wait time. Actually, I'll just copy this from up here. We're going to take this wait time and we're just going to restart it again. So we're going to reset this value again and we're going to start it. All right, so if we hit play now, we should see the enemy spawning after a certain amount of time, right? I gave it a little bit of time because we don't want it to be popping up right away. Nor do we want it to be very frequent, right? These are going to be things that come out every once in a while and uh, hassle you and make it more difficult for you to stay alive. So. 30 seconds or so goes by here. Okay, and there it is. Okay, so it just spawned. It's following whatever path we told it to follow. But we have a small problem. And I noticed this while I was testing before I started making the video. If we look at, in the debugger, you can look at the remote inspector, which will show you the scene tree as it exists right now. Here's the main scene. There's the enemy. Why is the enemy still there? It should have despawned, right? We just spawned another one. So we're having a problem where we are not, we're having a problem where we are not actually deleting the enemy when it goes off screen like it's supposed to. So here's our enemy scene. We had made this visibility notifier and just said that when it exits the screen, it should queue free. But that is not working, even though when we reach the end of the offset here, we are off the screen. And so I played around with it some, and I'm not quite sure yet. I need to do some more testing, but I suspect this may be a bug in the visibility notifier uh, when it's a child of a of a path follow 2D, it's not uh, detecting the transition to going off screen. But in the meantime, 
I think the easiest way to solve this is to, we're going to get rid of the visibility notifier. So I'm just going to get rid of that function and I'm going to delete the node. Okay. And instead in the script here in the process, when we're, when we're moving, we're just going to check that if the, on the follow, we're going to get the unit offset, which just measures from the beginning of the, of the path at zero to the end of the path at one. And if our offset is greater than one, then we know we have reached the end and we will do the queue free and that will solve our problem. The enemy instances will go away and be deleted when they go off the screen. So our next step is to get that enemy to shoot at the player. And so I've made this enemy bullet scene with, it's just an area 2D and a sprite and a collision, just like we made our player bullet. But uh, I did also find in the, as far as the art goes, I found this, this pretty cool texture that has all sorts of cool glowing looking uh, laser beams. All right, I thought these looked really nice and glowy, so I decided to use them instead of the ones that were in the Kenny art pack. So this comes as a single texture with all of the individual beams in it. So when you drop this on your bullet, you don't want to use the whole image. So you use region here, you set region, and then you can go in here and draw a box around which part of the texture you want to use for your sprite. Okay, so there's the enemy bullet. So now we need to just talk about how we're going to make it move. We're going to obviously instance it at the location of the enemy, and it's going to travel in the direction of the player. And here's the script for that. Uh, it's very simple. It's pretty much based on how we did the player bullet. Uh, we have the visibility notifier uh, freeing it when it goes off the screen. And other than that, we're just moving at a steady speed in a straight line at, at whatever direction we said to start at. So back to our enemy, I've added a bullet container, which is just a basic node that's going to hold all the bullets and the shoot timer, which is going to control how quickly the enemy fires. So if we go over to our script, I've just added a couple of variables to refer to those, and we're going to use that to make things happen. Now, for the shoot timer, we're probably going to want to vary this, the amount of time between bullets, also based on level. So I'm just going to set the wait time to about, say, 1.5 seconds for now. And this is going to vary by level. Is We will change that in a little bit, too, when we start to configure how things vary by level in general. So we'll just say start. And we'll connect the timeout signal. And this is going to shoot. And actually, I'm going to call this shoot1 because I'm going to define a function that shoots one bullet. Uh, you'll see why in a few minutes I have some other things I want to do too. So we need to calculate what direction that bullet's going to fly in. So we need to get the global position of ourselves. And we need to subtract the target. Well, what is the target? We haven't set that. So when we, so when we first start, we don't have a target, right? So we're going to have a variable called target. We're going to need to set that when we instance the bullet, or actually we're going to need to set that when we instance the enemy, we're going to set that. And then we're going to usually set it to the player because that's what we want the enemies to shoot at but we'll get the global position of that. Then we instance a bullet, add it as a child of the bullet container. And then we use the start at the bullets start at method to set its angle to whatever the angle of that vector was 
towards the player. And we start its location is going to be the global position of the enemy. So how do we set the target? Well, we need to set that when we instance the enemy over in the main. So back over here in the main script, when we added the enemy here, we're just going to say the enemy's target is the player. And if we check that out, all right, skipped ahead a little bit just so that we can see the enemy when it comes on screen. You don't have to wait the whole time. Sorry for the testing on the videos. I probably should have set the spawn time lower just so that we could see the enemy pop out quickly just to see it happening. All right, there it is. Okay, there comes a bullet. There comes a bullet. They are flying towards where the player is, but not very fast. So they're pretty easy to dodge. And that's okay. We can obviously adjust that. The enemy bullets have a speed here. We can increase or decrease this. Right, we can also, the other thing I wanted to do was also have a function where we can, or I want to try this out, I should say. I don't know for sure if this is what I want to do. So I'm just going to try it this way, and I will probably, clean, we'll probably clean up this code later if it turns out to be something that we like and want to keep doing. Um, I just want to try it out a little bit at the moment. So what I'm going to do is make a... A different function where it shoots a spread of bullets. So for this, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the direction that we needed to go in. But then we're going to have a little loop here where we add to the angle by a certain amount. So I'm going to just add and subtract 0.1 radians from the, from the direction. And then we instance it like we did here. But when we do start at, we take the angle and we add, we just add that A. Okay, so let's just call that shoot three now when the timer runs out. And in the interest of testing, I'm going to go over here and change the spawn time to a low number so that we will see it come out pretty quick. Okay, so here comes our, there we go. So there you see the spread of bullets coming out. That's not too bad. Obviously we get some sound in there, that'll be better. And of course we want them to do something when they run into the player, of course. Okay, so I went ahead and did that. I just added a sound player and I'm playing the enemy laser sound when the enemy shoots. Again, I'm not going over the details of that because we've already done that before in other nodes. But now we at least have a, a little bit of a sound. So we're going to leave that as it is now for, the, for this video. And in the next one, we will start to figure out how to make the enemy bullets damage the player. The player bullets damage the enemy. Uh, the player might run into the enemy. we got to deal with that. And the other thing is also, I also want, I was thinking of another type of weapon the enemy might have, which would be a kind of homing missile slash torpedo kind of thing that will um, not quite move as fast, but it will follow the player and create a big explosion. So you want to get away from it before it gets near you. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.